Hey guys, today I'm talking about homemade rooting hormones. I have six tomato plants that were all started at the same time and we've used four different types of homemade rooting hormone. One is the standard manufactured rooting hormone that you get at the store and one of these is a control. It is a water started tomato plant. So I'm going to go through each one of these and tell you how to make each one and what worked best for this test. So guys, rooting hormones will help your plant get off to a head start. Now it's not always necessary. Th some plants root naturally better. They're just very easy to root. But if you want to boost the success level of your vegetables and plants you're wanting to take cuttings from, a rooting hormone will speed that process up and give you a higher rate of success. So for years, I've used synthetic rooting hormone, and it's always worked best for me. There's no problems with it, but sometimes you want to experiment and try different things. So what I've done is I've taken the standard that I always use, the standard brand, and I've added these to it. So we're going to go through each step and tell you how to make each homemade rooting hormone and then give you the results in just a sec. Now, also at the end of the video, I'm going to discuss the safety of synthetic rooting hormone and whether or not you should or shouldn't use it and possibly a couple of things that might make it one of those things you may want to be really careful about using. But anyways, rooting hormone is what we're talking about today. Now, the first one we're talking about is rooting hormone is made with cinnamon powder. You can also grind up cinnamon bark yourself in a food processor and get it into a fine powder. But what you want to do, you just want to put it in a container. Just a little bit will do. You don't have to have a lot. This cutting of a tomato plant, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the lower limb. I'm also going to root, remove any flowers so I can put all the energy into creating roots for this. We're just going to dip this in there. We don't have to over dip it. It doesn't have to be dipped with water first. Also, I wanted to show you one I recently did a couple of weeks ago. This was done with the cinnamon. So you can see there's a lot of roots that have formed in a short amount of time from using cinnamon. So cinnamon does work quite well. Now, the second one we're going to talk about is willow. And willow is known to have a lot of rooting hormones, especially in the spring springtime that's the best time to do it i usually cut these into one inch sections and then i take my greenhouse blender food processor whatever you want to call it and i take these one to one and a half inch cuttings i put them in the blender and make a slurry out of it then i take my tomato cuttings or whatever types of cuttings i have dip them into that water and then go into either a cup like this or i put them directly into some seedling starting soil that is pure now the next homemade rooting hormone can be made from unpasteurized raw and unfiltered honey. We just take about two tablespoons and I put it in about a one to two cups, depending on how strong you want to make it. But about generally I do about one cup on the first batch and see how that turns out. One to two tablespoons. I put it into my warm water. The water doesn't have to be scalding hot, but it just needs to be warm so the honey will dissolve easily. We mix that in there carefully. We take our tomato cutting or whatever type of cutting, we dip it in there and then put it either into a cloning system or we can put it directly into our soil. I've got a video I made about how to make your own cloning system and I'll link that up above as well. Now the next natural rooting hormone we're going to use is aloe vera. So we'll take our scissors and we'll just cut off one section there of the aloe vera and we're going to get that aloe vera out of the stem. So we're going to take a knife and just cut the skin off the aloe vera so we can scoop out the gel, and as you can see, it's very thick, but there's a lot of gel in there, so we just scoop it out, and we're going to put it into a cup. And we're going to take our aloe vera, and we're just going to scrape that out into our glass. And it's a little bit more difficult when you have an extremely sharp knife, but we're just going to scrape that into the glass. That's going to come out to be about one to two tablespoons. I'm going to add in some warm water, mix it thoroughly, and then dip our cutting into the mixture. Now the next thing you can use is two aspirin uncoated. These are 325 milligrams. You crush them into a fine powder. Do the same thing. You don't have to put water. Once you take your cutting, you don't have to put water in your cup. Just dip them into the dry powder and do the same thing with the rooting hormone. We're going to go through each one of these and see how these performed. So that covers our four homemade methods. Now I'm going to talk about the powdered synthetic rooting hormone. This is the brand I often use, but I, I kind of switch back and forth depending what I have in the greenhouse, either have this or the Clonex or the dip and grow. One is a powder, one's a gel, and one's a liquid that you can increase the strength on. And I'll link all those down below, but I'm going to show you what worked best and we'll do a lineup and see which one seems to be growing best. They're all under the same light conditions. They were transferred to soil just this week. So they've been growing just in water 
and now they're ready to go out in the garden once our warm weather comes in. So I briefly want to cover some myths and things that people swear that work, but I've never had any success with them. The first one is saliva by putting the cutting in your mouth and having human saliva on the cutting. I've shown no positive results from that. And actually, I've had a couple that died from rot. So I don't think there was any positive effect at all to using human saliva. Now, the next method I came across is using apple cider vinegar, either straight or diluted in two cups of water. And I just didn't see any positive results with that. It might help prevent some types of bacteria or fungal issues, which often do plague cuttings when they're first started, but I just didn't see any positive results with apple cider vinegar. So I would say that's probably a no. Now, another alternative method of using rooting hormone is also you can lay them on their side if it's a hard stick-like cutting, a harder wood cutting, not really a soft like a tomato cutting, but you can put moist sand in there. Make sure you cover it with either saran wrap or a clear lid, put it on its side and just keep the sand lightly moist. And it can really work well on some of those more like a hardwood cutting, an actual stick-like cutting, not something like tomato cuttings. Now I wanted to pan to the other side of the greenhouse and show you a lot of the cuttings I have going right now. And one of the reasons that cuttings can fail is not having a conducive environment that's right for your cutting. So I'm going to do a quick overview of the four most common reason cuttings fail. Now if you're starting your cuttings in early spring and you're doing it in a basement or an unheated greenhouse, you want to make sure you use a seedling heated mat. That's going to really increase your success rate. And just remember that will really work great. I'll link one down below, but that's what I use every time if it's a cooler time of year. So another thing that's really important is to remember to have enough light on your cuttings. Not never, never, never direct sunlight, but something like a good grow light. I'll link one of those as well. But a good, good grow light will save you a lot of trouble when it comes to starting your cuttings and your success rate again will be much higher. Now a lack of fresh air or air movement can be almost always one of those things that will cause bacterial or fungal growth at the base of your cuttings and they'll rotten very quickly. If you have them in that plastic container I showed you earlier, make sure you open it about once every few days and a little bit, little bit of fresh air come in there. And also if you can have a, a fan blowing not directly on your cuttings, but maybe just to circulate the air around them, to make sure that fungal issue doesn't pop up because that's very common with cuttings. Now humidity is a critical thing that you have to remember when you're taking cuttings. I often use these Starbucks type cups I order from Amazon. I put just a little bit of soil in them or sometimes I'll just grow them directly in water. I seal the top where the straw would normally go in. I seal it with a piece of tape and keep humidity high. I can pop the top off and allow a little bit of airflow and also it lets plenty of light in through the cup itself. Now I showed you this earlier which was a just a standard plastic drinking cup. But what I also have in here, I have one of these net cups and also I have a neoprene collar that you can take your cutting, put it inside there after you've dipped it in your rooting hormone, put it in the net cup and then place it in your drinking cup. And so you have a little miniature seed starting system there. Make sure it's still covered in lots of humidity as well to keep it high. But that's just one of those things. I'll link both the net cups and the neoprene collars down below. Now I've talked a lot about homemade and do-it-yourself rooting hormones, but in all honesty, I found more success with using the synthetic varieties and especially the one that's the dip and grow that you can increase the concentration and the powder and the gel, you're kind of stuck at a certain level, but you will have a higher success rate. But if you want to get away from the synthetic and you want to try an all natural approach, then those will work as well. Now, a lot of people question the safety of synthetic rooting hormones. That question is, is it safe to get it on your hands? Is it safe to have it around if you breathe any? Is it super toxic? So I'll go over the few things I can tell you about the safety of this product. So the quick answer is yes, it is perfectly safe. Now you don't want to spill some and breathe it in because that could really irritate your skin. Excuse me, it could irritate your lungs. You could also get some on your hands get it around your eyes and it'll irritate your eyes as well. So that's just one thing to remember. One of the key components to this is talcum powder. And so breathing that in, getting it in your eyes is not going to be good for you. Now, the next question I often hear about rooting hormones is if you're using it in vegetables, does this synthetic hormone ultimately end up in your vegetable? Well, this type of hormone is already in your vegetables, so it is safe. It may be slightly elevated if you use it in a super high concentration, but it's not going to harm you because it's just a natural part of your vegetables in your garden anyways. 
Now, some people told me that their success rate actually dropped when they used the powder, and I believe the reason that was is they dipped each cutting in water first and then put in a massive amount, and it kind of turns into a thick, sludgy kind of material on the base, and it doesn't allow the roots to form properly. So if you do dip it, you don't have to put it in water first, just lightly dip it in the powder. The tip is the most important place for a rooting hormone to be and just a little bit on the stem. So just remember a quick dip is gonna work best. Okay, I wanted to talk about our synthetic versus our homemade rooting hormones and also what happened when we just used water with no rooting hormone. Our number one result was with the powdered rooting hormone. The synthetic rooting hormone did best. It's the largest and it seems to work as I thought it would. Number two was the cinnamon. It worked second best. It's almost as large, but it's not quite as full as some of the leaves on this one. The third one, the third largest, was the willow bark. It also did very well. A little bit more leggy, but this one has a little bit more growth on it, but the willow bark did well as two. The honey was the third one down. It seems to be a little bit more full on the leaves, but it also did well. The next one is the aloe vera. It did the worst out of our four cent uh, excuse me our homemade rooting hormones and our last was just plain water it actually did the worst because it had no additional rooting hormones they un all under the same light conditions all were growing in just water and then they were transferred to these cups so as you can see there is a big difference between using no rooting hormone our homemades and then the best of course was our synthetic and this is exactly the way i thought it would turn out but the two best seem to be cinnamon and the synthetic rooting hormone and then the third i might try again is the willow bark but as far as the honey or the aloe vera i don't think i would try those again and i would always have some type of rooting hormone rather than just doing it in water i want to have as maximum amount of growth as possible in the shortest amount of time so guys i hope you found that information helpful if you did i hope you'll like and subscribe and if you want to see the i have two types of cloning systems i have just a five gallon bucket cloning system and then a much larger cloning system. The earlier one I talked about was the five gallon bucket cloner. And I'll also link right here, the extra large cloning. I think it can do almost 50 cuttings at one time. So it's really a much larger cloning system and it works great. So I'll link both of those the other one earlier and this one now. So if I left anything out, I hope you'll leave a comment down below. And if there's some type of rooting hormone you've had a lot of success with, I hope you'll leave that information down below as well. I'd love to experiment with that as well. So anyways, have a great day.